Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. What are the rules? Pokemon and 880 Chief Editor to Sibling Reviews here. And welcome to Retro West. Retro West is a more PC centered series of nostalgic reviews as we explore old PC classics which came out before the rise of traditional GUI graphical user interface operating systems like Windows and Mac OS. And what better way to launch the series is to review a game Day one. This time I review the remake of the Dwell series most beloved FPS RPG hybrid. Can Greg have the computer or will he serve our AI Overlord Showdown well as a cyborg? Well without further ado, let's find out. Travel between the UK and continental Europe became a little easier as the Channel Tunnel and Eurostar service was officially completed and opened to the public. 1984 was also a very sad year for metal music as Nirvana's lead singer Kurt Cobain took his own life while battling drug addiction and depression. Aged only 27. 1984 was also a significant year for the film industry as Quentin Tarantino's second film, Pulp Fiction, was released to the public. What? You know what, Lucky? Say what again. Say what again. I dare you. I double dare you. Pulp Fiction was also the acting debut of Samuel L. Jackson. The film raked in a massive $213.9 million at the box office. To put things into perspective, Ridley Scott's first film, Aliens Box Office Earnings, was $104.93 million. By my calculations, Pulp Fiction's had almost double the profits of that highly successful revolutionary horror movie. And the world of PC gaming, 3D made shooters was all the rage thanks to Ed Software's revolutionary first person shooter, Doom, released one year prior. It can be said that the game turned gaming in general on its head. As I said numerous times before in the gaming industry, when one game or trend goes highly successful or influential, copycats will sure to follow. I could create an entire video expanding and demonstrating on this point, but you know what guys, I'm not going to. Anyway, back to System Shock. This game is a total remake of the original 1994 cult classic game, which was a hybrid of three distinctive genres. First person shooters such as the aforementioned Doom, survival horror such as the highly successful Resident Evil series, and RPGs for example Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger. The game takes place in the year 2072. You play as a hacker who stuck his nose into somewhere he shouldn't. In this case, protected files within the Trioptimum Corporation's corporate network concerning Citadel Station orbiting Saturn. By the way guys, fun fact for you guys, did you know that Saturn has no surface? The planet is in fact a gas giant. Its atmosphere is comprised mainly of helium. Saturn also has the more most amount of moons in orbit than any other planet in our solar system. According to NASA, Saturn has 124 of them. The largest of which, Titan, is actually larger than Mercury. Again, could you not guys, could you not. Unfortunately, your intrusion attempt got detected and Trioptimum security forces arrest you and you're then you're whisked away from to the station itself. You are then ordered to modify the AI which controls most of the station, the Sentiment Hyper Optimized Data Access Network or Shodan. As a reward, you are fitted with a military grade neural interface. But during the six month long healing coma that followed this, the station security cyborgs were reprogrammed for hostility. As a result, of the crew on board is either killed by security cyborgs or mutated due to a biological contamination. To make matters worse, Shodan is using the station's drilling laser for a possible strike against Earth. It is up to you to navigate the station floor by floor while Shodan is always watching you and trying to stop you in any way it can. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility gave an 8.5. Let's start off with the positives. There are numerous color schemes that can be applied to the game's interface on the fly. Each and every color scheme is extremely friendly to a colorblind person. However, due to the game's cyberpunk theme, 
there, the game has screen flashes. However, these flashes are very few and far between. Not nearly as intense as Cyberpunk's 2077's brain dance sequences, which are infamous for causing seizures. So if you are going to play this game and, and as an epilepsy sufferer, please ensure that you're playing this game in a well-lit environment. A well-lit environment is probably the best way to stop um, seizures when trying to play video games in general. I have been playing the demo throughout this game to eight year long development cycle and have yet to have experienced a single seizure while playing this game. So apart from the possible problems when playing this game while suffering from epilepsy, you'll be able to play this game with no issues. Next up, Audibility Game 7. There are in-game subtitles which can be enabled and disabled via the game's options menu. These subtitles are in present in audio logs, explaining to you what you need to do to progress through the various floors in the game. However, as par for the course, for horror games, you are reliant on your sense of hearing to determine whether or not you are close to an enemy and where the enemy is. Also, there is no way of customizing font sizes and subtitles in menu and the in-game interface, which can pose a very serious issue in a text-heavy game like System Shock. So players with hearing impairments might want to give this the free demo version a try or wait until the game launches on PC Games Pass. Seriously guys, that's what it's for, before committing any money for the full version. Next up, Mobility Given 9. The game feels like a step in the right direction. The keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized and following you to customize the controls to suit your impairment. Even better, this game has full controller support right out of the box, which functions in a co-pilot fashion. These button layers can be customized when using a controller, however, there are no alternate stick layers available, and this issue might cascade when, to the console version when it releases later on this year. So a player with a mobility impairment will be able to play this game with no issues, however, work should be done in adding alternate stick layers before this game releases on the console. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay has got a sky high lemon. This game's development cycle has been quite the turbulent one. The game's successful Kickstarter campaign ended seven years ago. After numerous delays and misrelease dates, today the game is finally out. I have been following the game's development since the demo was released years ago, and I would have to say and I'm extremely impressed. The team in Night Dive has done a phenomenal job in remastering the classic game, which I used to play a lot in my childhood days. They have kept the majority of the game's classics assets intact, while adding a few more to make this game relevant in today's market. The game's use of Unreal Engine 4 makes the graphics look absolutely stunning. The cyberspace section has also transitioned very well from the original and feel very fluent while exploring. In summary, System Shock is yet another example of a remake of a classic game done right. The atmosphere created by the overall presentation while wandering around the dark corridors of Citadel Station is excellent. The graphics of this game holds up extremely well by modern day standards, while remaining faithful to the original game. In terms of system requirements, the game is likely quite meant to low spec friendly. If your PC can run Destiny 2, you should be able to play this run this game with fairly decent settings. Yes, this game is a little pricey for a remake of a 1994 game, but the experience will be worth every penny. This game is highly recommended, and the overall score is 88.75%. See you guys in the next review. Spartan Commander, 1988. Roll Light, Spartan Century.